Right. To continue our remaining uh, 40 to 50 minutes lecture, we are going to look into the aspect of aerodynamic design of the propeller. Right. Uh, earlier in the lecture of propeller theory, I've shown some examples of how the blades are being twisted and they are having different type of airfall so what is the reason behind it okay uh, in order for us to understand the reasoning of the design of the propeller we will look into the aspect of aerodynamic design and we will touch upon axial momentum actuated this theory and then followed by modified momentum or simple vortex model before we end uh, the 4.6 in the topic on blade element considerations. In terms of the aerodynamics uh, design, uh, the aerodynamic developments of propellers started with the simple Rankine fruit momentum theory. Right? So we are going to go into the basic now. The next uh, blade element theories that we are going to cover provided more realistic results eh, in terms of uh, the aerodynamics development of propellers eh, and lead to a practical propeller design calculation. So earlier method using Rankine fruit momentum theory uh, where designers are uh, struggling to establish the fundamentals of the uh, aerodynamic development of propellers and then the modern uh, uh, methodology are using the blade element theory. So initially, lump into inflow factors are used to evaluate flow velocities around a blade element. Okay, this, so this section will handle only actuated this as well as the blade element theories. Right, let us look into the first one, axial momentum or actuated this theory. Oops. The actuated disc is also sometimes denoted as Rankine fruit or slipstream theory. And this is a uh, way back in 1865. But it is a very fundamental work right, uh, being, being done. And the actuated disc theory replaces the propeller with an infinitely thin plane actuated disc. Right? So uh like like this one it's not you are having uh uh propeller blades uh, you imagine it is an actuated disc so so regardless of how many regardless of how many blades you have so it is uh, being assumed to become a thin plane of actuator this eh, which imparts a certain momentum to the fluid passing through it thus produces an increase in axial velocity and axial momentum. So we, we will look into a larger uh, uh, picture of this uh, diagram uh, which shows uh, actuated this in physical plane uh, plan and its pressure and velocity distribution. So the, we have the uh, pressure distribution over here, the velocity distribution over here and uh, the uh, uh, station. Eh? We have station 1, 2, 3 and, and 4. Okay, so this theory provides an initial idea eh, regarding the performance of a profil propeller. Normally we call it as the efficiency of the propeller. So but fail to furnish the required design data for the propeller blades, right? So the following assumptions when you want to go into the axial momentum or actuator this theory uh, being stated here. The first one, we assume that the fluid is one-dimensional. So it's just one direction in the x-axis. Eh? It is perfect. The fluid is perfect, okay, ideal. And it is incompressible compressible as well as isentropic. So the fluid is one-dimensional. The fluid is perfect. The fluid is incompressible. And the fluid is also isentropic condition with regard to the flow flow has uniform properties okay we have in terms of the uh, flow velocity the pressure across any plane normal to the flow 
except for this continuous jump in pressure across the disc itself and that's uh, the the assumption and rotation imparted to the flow is neglected okay just to simplify our uh, assumptions the next one is that the streamlines at the edge of the disc define the outer limit of the contracting stream tube okay, which passes through the disc and separates it from the surrounding flow okay so the stream tube has cylindrical sections in both far upstream and far downstream so the flow outside the propeller stream tube has constant stagnation pressure in terms of no work is imparted to it right let us look back at figure 4.35 okay, which illustrates the fluid streamlines uh, the fluid streamlines like this eh, where the fluid coming from um, the entry point to the exit point eh, 1 to 4 station 1 to 4 and the velocity velocity uh, what we call it the velocity profile okay this is the velocity profile velocity at 1 is less and then it's increasing up and it is exiting at a higher velocity and the pressure profile okay when it goes uh, into the stream tube uh, stream uh, and then exiting the stream tube okay um, the station that being uh, highlighted here eh, one is far upstream the propeller okay number two is denoted as just in front the propeller so you you have the actuator this here okay uh, like being shaded gray over there okay three is just after the propeller and four is further downstream the propeller so that you can uh, see uh, how are we going to go through the uh, station eh? station one two three and and four later on all right this is what being uh, denoted eh? station one very far number number two is just before uh, it enters the uh, the disc the propeller and then three is just after four is further down downstream okay right the distance between two and three okay two and three is just before and after the propeller disc okay is assumed in finite Decimal. So what is uh, infinitesimal is basically it's just a concept eh, that represent a quantity that is infinitely small, right? It is uh, very small, but not zero. Okay, so it's just very close, uh, just before and just after, right? And then uh, along the stream tube between station one and four, the velocity increases eh, from the free upstream value v one at cross-sectional area A1 to the value V4 in the cross-sectional area A4. You can refer back to the figure 4.35 just now to see where the velocity increases, okay? And then the static pressure at station 1 and 4 is the ambient atmospheric pressure, value PA, right? So P1, P4 equal to PA. Okay, P1 equal to P4 and equal to PA while the di pressure difference builds up across the disc. So if you can just go back quickly, right? So you can refer to PA here, P1, okay? Pressure uh, drops, okay? And then uh, P2 and P3 is just infinitesimally small, right? So there's a pressure difference between the uh, before and after the disc and then the uh, flow will exit at a different uh, the same pressure as pa so p entry and p exit is the same the velocity increases between one to four okay i hope everybody are in the same page uh, as uh, what we are going through now okay now the velocity at the disc okay velocity of at the disc is the same eh? v2 before and v3 after the disc uh, is the same and it can be written as v2 equal to v1 1 plus a what is that eh? where a v1 okay v1 uh, a v1 is basically the difference between velocity 2 and 1 
right? Before and after. Okay, the incoming velocity and the velocity just before the it enters the disk. So it is the increase in velocity through the disk and A, okay, the, the, the symbol A here is called the axial inflow factor. All right? So the other one is actually uh, being called slipstream factor B. Right? So in the fully developed slip, slipstream, the velocity V4 equal to V1, 1 plus B, basically B V1 equal to V4 minus V1. And the B is actually the slipstream factor. So you have the two elements of velocity. One, the axial inflow factor, A. The other one is inflow, sorry, the slipstream factor, B. Right? That is V2 and that is V4 uh, 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 component. All right. So what is going to happen is that we rearrange to get what is the value of A. A basically the difference between V2 uh, and V1 over V1 whereas uh, B is actually V4 minus V1 over V1. This will be equation 4.42 and equation 4.43. Right. So bear in mind, we are going to use this on Thursday, okay, so that we can uh, uh, solve the examples. Eh? Right, let, them, let us move into the thrust, eh? 4.6.1.1. Okay, applying Newton's second law, which is the conservation of momentum principle in the axial flow direction to the control region between 1 and 4. We still refer to figure 4.35, okay. The thrust itself is simply the rate of increase of momentum of the airflow in the downstream direction. So thrust equal to the mass flow rate m dot times the velocity difference between 4 and and 1. Okay, so we have seen this in our uh, uh, lecture earlier lecture. Okay, dropping the subscript 1 on the free stream velocity put v equal to v1. Okay, so of course. We can just have a V over there. So we can have the expression of the thrust in term of the uh, V as well as the B, eh? the, the slipstream factor, right? So this is going to be equation 445 where mass flow rate is the mass flow through the actuator disk, right? So mass flow rate through the actuator disk is the density time area of the disk, density of the fluid, in, term, in this case is the air, time the area of the disk, area of the propeller itself, okay, and um, the velocity before it goes into the, the uh, disk, and the disk of the area, right. So, and then you can um, uh, use the exp earlier expression of of A, eh, you can you can uh, convert it V2 equal to V1 plus A, it become equation 4.46. Right. Using the equation 4.44 through 4.46, we can rearrange the thrust. Eh, T, uh, thrust equal to Density times the area of the disk times velocity 2 the, uh, times the difference between V4 minus V1 and rearranging in term of A and B. Okay, so you can have this expression. The force balance across the disk requires that the thrust equal to the area times the pressure, pressure difference. So that will be equation 4.48, right? Where from Figure 4.35, we know that the temperature, the pressure difference is actually happening at 3 and 2, eh? just before the disk and the, air, the uh, area after the disk. So, delta P is actually P3 minus P2. Eliminating T yeah, from equation 4.47, rearranging uh, together with 4.48, gives the pressure different in terms of, of the 
velocity values and eh? the density times the velocity squared times 1 plus a times b and that will be equation 4.50 what going to happen is that since the flow is assumed incompressible okay then Bernoulli's equation applied between station 1 and 2 right using Bernoulli uh, principles so the pressure at a the atmospheric pressure this is station 1 plus half rho v squared the kinetic energy equal to the pressure at station 2 plus half rho v squared and this is the component of the velocity we have a over there and applying Bernoulli equation also to station 3 and 4 yields the same uh, values eh? so you can have because um, so we, we have the component of the slip stream factor as well b eh? so rearranging you can get uh, p3 minus p2 which is the delta p eh? so uh, all the component that we had earlier the delta p is equal to only uh, the density times the velocity squared and the component of steep stream factor B only. There's no more uh, the um, A value over there. Then we want to eliminate delta P, okay, from equation 450 and 451 gives this, eh, where A is actually equal to B over 2 or B equal to 2 to A, right? As simple as that. From equation 442 and 443, we can then easily prove that the velocity at station 2 is actually equal to velocity of the incoming air, V1, velocity uh, at exiting the, the uh, free stream uh, tube, V4 over, over 2. Okay? Moreover, at zero forward speed, when there is... Uh, aircraft of the, the engine is stationary uh, at the at the uh, tarmac okay v uh, can be denoted as zero and v equal to v1 equal to zero so basically when v1 equal to zero uh, the v4 is actually just two times v2 right? this is condition at the incoming air or forward speed equal to equal to zero so this simple but important results eh, means that at any speed including either it's zero one half of the final increase in velocity in the slipstream has already occurred eh, at the roto disk itself so using equation 447 and 452 the following relation can between the thrust and the inflow factor a or the slip stream factor B can be derived as follows. So you can uh, re re uh, arrange back equation 447 and 452. So to get the thrust component in terms of uh, the slip stream factor B. Eh? So you can you can rearrange that. Okay, it can the thrust also can be uh, denoted by the inflow factor A. Equation 554, 5, 4.54 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, is a quadratic in, a, in the parameters of uh, inflow factor and uh, free stream factor, slip stream factor B, yeah, which have the solutions eh, A equal to minus uh, negative half plus minus the square root of these values. Eh, so that will become 4.55A. And denoting that the induced velocity, the small v, equal to the uh, uh, for, uh, for flow factor A times the velocity, incoming uh, velocity, uh, at the propeller disk, then you can rewrite uh, expression 455A to become 455B. All right? Moreover, you can also uh, denote uh, it as B as well eh? in terms of 455C. This is also can be uh, the slipstream factor 
uh, B can also be expressed over here, denoting small w, eh, which is the induced velocity far downstream, eh, equal to dv, right? Okay. Uh, then we can also have the uh, induced velocity far downstream of the slips uh, of the disc uh, to become expression 455d. Okay, let us look into the uh, formula used for propulsive efficiency for propeller. The propulsive efficiency, zeta p, eh, normally we use zeta, we have seen this uh, in the gas power cycle topic, eh, zeta uh, propeller now is a ratio of the available power, okay, or sometimes identified as useful thrust power, okay, uh, PA equal to TV, eh, the thrust time the velocity, eh, a useful uh, power, Okay, available power PA, which is equal to the thrust times the velocity to the power delivered to the propeller. For piston engine, so this is the shaft brake power P. Okay, zeta P equal to uh, available power over power, which is equal to the thrust times the velocity over the uh, shaft brake power sorry p is shaft brake power eh? p so so this is for piston engine equation four five six for the actuator this model in uh, figure three four point three five so this efficiency is an ideal propulsive propulsive efficiency zeta p and because it ignores all losses we assume it is perfect except that associated with the streamwise kinetic energy, right? So using equation 450 and 454, which, which gives useful thrust power TV, okay, in terms of this expression. You can see that the velocity now is already to the power of 3. The power expanded on the air, which is equal to P, equal to the rate of change of kinetic energy okay you can then uh, rearrange it and the power uh, equal to half mass flow rate time the uh, expression here in terms of the velocity and the slipstream uh, factor okay and then also can be expressed in terms of the uh, inflow factor a okay so the ratio of these two powers, one obtained in equation 457 and the other one in 458, okay, for the ideal actuator, this model is called the ideal fruit efficiency, zeta f, and is therefore the upper limit to the propeller performance. So this is the maximum that the propeller can achieve, right? So zeta p, is just a rough uh, value, but zeta f, okay, the fruit efficiency is basically the upper limit of the propeller performance. So, like being expressed here, zeta f itself equal to the 1 over 1 plus the inflow factor A equal to the V1 velocity very far from the uh, this over V2 just before the this equal to v over v plus uh, uh, small small v eh? so equation 459 eh, which prove that higher efficiency of the propulsion can be achieved by large rotors eh, with very small increase in fluid velocity right so you have a small uh, increase in fluid velocity but you can have higher uh, efficiency of Propulsive eh, propulsion from the propeller, eh, achieving thrust by large surface rather than velocity. Ideal fruit efficiency, eh, zeta f, is always greater than the actual propulsive efficiency, zeta p. As I said earlier, this is the upper limit eh, of the zeta p. Okay, actual propulsive efficiency, right? Uh, is actually normally this is the 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 actual 
but the ideal okay is the upper limit the maximum that it can go is actually we call it as the crude crude efficiency example 4.5 just a small calculation using what we have already shown just now. The figure, this particular figure shows uh, Cessna 335 or Cessna 340 type of aircraft, and which is powered by two piston engine, left and right, over there, mounted on the wing, okay, and uh, produces, each one produces 2,900 Newton thrust force, okay. The thrust is given already. Each propeller is three-bladed. Okay, the propeller number is three, having diameter 1.92 meter. Okay, the diameter is 1.92. And also giving, given the service ceiling of the airplane of 30,000 feet and a cruise speed of 450 kilometer per hour. So those are the numbers given to you. Okay. Right, you need to calculate the efficiency using actuator this theory and then calculate the pressure jump across the propeller. So there are two steps, uh, two uh, things that you need to calculate. Eh? Uh, the first one, to calculate the propeller efficiency, given the flight speed is uh, over here, so kilometer per hour, you have to convert into meter per second, 450 kilometer per hour, Okay, times 1,000 over 3,600, you get 125 meter per second. So that's the, the uh, speed of the flight speed and the speed of the aircraft. And then uh, using uh, propeller fruit efficiency uh, equation, equation 459, zeta f equal to v over v plus small v, the induced velocity, right? So, you have the value of V, but you do not have the value of induced velocity. Let us calculate the induced velocity from equation 455B, right? Which is equal to the half of the uh, negative half of the velocity of the flight speed over 2 plus the square root of the term inside here. You have the thrust value, you have the diameter of the uh, propeller and you can calculate the area right you know the density of air at uh, just now is 30,000 feet eh? okay 30,000 feet and then you can obtain the induced velocity v all right let us look at the on the solution air density at 30,000 feet is 0 0.458 kilogram per cubic meter Right. Normally, you are going to be supplied with a table uh, of uh, air, standard air. So, you look at 30,000 feet, what is the value, corresponding value of the density. Or normally, in the examination, uh, to uh, cut short of the time, you can also be given the value of the density. Right. So, to find the propeller area, you use a simple uh, area calculation, area equal to the pi times the diameter squared over 4, you put the diameter value 1.92 and sometimes question trick you, they put a radius, right? So make sure you use the right formula. If it is radius, it is not using this formula. Okay, you can just convert it. So it now it is straightforward. It is the diameter 1.92. So you can get the propeller area to become 2.895 square meter, right? And then you can get the induced velocity by putting all the numbers there, right? Uh, you can get the induced velocity, which is, oh, I'm very sorry. So the this is uh, not supposed to be until the end. Eh? So the value of induced velocity is 8.21 meter per second, right? So putting the numbers in, you get the propeller efficiency, the fruit efficiency of the Cessna aircraft to become 93.84 percent right so which is very high 93.84 eh? percent to continue to calculate the pressure jump across the propeller eh? you want to evaluate the pressure different across the propeller we calculate the pressure upstream 
of the propeller from Bernoulli's equation. Using the Bernoulli's equation, we have the atmospheric pressure minus uh, P2 equal to the density of air at 30,000 feet over 2 and the velocity that you have already obtained earlier. The flight speed V and the induced velocity small v. So the atmospheric pressure uh, at 30,000 feet, okay, it is not one atmosphere. So it is 30.09 kilopascal. So value again, this value normally being given or you are given a table to look into the value of atmospheric pressure at this altitude, okay? Don't uh, use 101.4 kilopascal eh, at uh, uh, sea level, right? So use, use the value and then you get uh, P ATM minus P2 equal to 484.45 pascal, right? The pressure downstream of the propeller is calculated from Bernoulli's equation, P3 minus P ATM, and you can then get all these input and put all the values there using the right uh, density, okay, uh, of air at 30,000 feet, you get P3 minus P ATM is 515.34 Pascal. Okay, adding equation 1 and 2, you get P3 minus P2, which is equal to 1 kilo Pascal. So this pressure difference can easily be found from equation 446. So the delta P, which is P3 minus P2, equal to the uh, T, which is the thrust over the area of the of the uh, um, propeller disc, eh? so this is the area, okay, you can then get the value of around 1 kilopascal as well, right? So you can use uh, both methods, uh, I, the same answer you will get, all right? This is more, uh, more uh, accurate, okay? Right, let us move into uh, the next one, modified momentum or simple vortex model okay uh, with regard to this eh, a practical assessment of the propeller performance eh, and design of realistic propeller require inclusion of at least some of the foregoing effects and allowance for blading details so in this simple vortex model the effect of rotational flow will be discussed hereafter Okay, so you, you want to include the effect of the rotational flow in this our uh, uh, modified momentum model. So consider a stream tube eh, that passes through the propeller section at radius R. Okay, now we given you radius R propeller in this particular figure, figure 436. Okay. Uh, and the corresponding corresponding angular velocity because we want to include the rotational effect we have to consider the angular speed of this blade is called omega r right so this is a symbol omega times the r that is the angular speed times uh, omega times r okay where omega is the angular speed of the propeller r is the radius of the propeller okay so when a fluid passes through the propeller section it acquires an angular speed okay angular speed omega okay due to the swirling nature of the flow induced by the propeller okay once uh, the propeller rotates okay so the uh, fluid passes through the propeller section, okay, acquire angular speed because of the swirling nature. Eh? So thus, the rotational speed at propeller section U, eh, you, the rotational speed U equal to the uh, A angular induced factor, okay, angular induced factor uh, A omega, subscript omega, okay, times the angular velocity omega times the radius of the propeller. Okay, this will become your equation 4, 6, 0. The local flow velocity just downstream of the propeller blade, 
local flow velocity let us look back here and local flow velocity just upstream sorry just downstream of the propeller blade uh, vr okay and then there's another local flow velocity uh, far downstream so you can see here this is a uh, vr um, over here which is v2 and this is v prime r is the uh, local flow velocity further downstream so this is uh, just downstream of the propeller disc okay v2 and the other one is v prime r which is further downstream of the of the uh, propeller disc okay this can be expressed over here vr itself is uh, is uh, uh, which is equal to uh, square root of uh, v2 which is just downstream of the velocity downstream of the propeller plus the angular velocity u and the, the angular velocity the rotational speed uh, u that we have already found earlier okay we have that that component okay you can put then you can put all the uh, values that we have already obtained uh, in the earlier equation and the v prime r and the velocity far downstream okay is actually at v4 okay you can see here this is at the station 4 again station 1 station 2 station 3 station station 4 eh? right so you can then have all the components at the same time okay right the local propulsive efficiency at any radius of the propeller are based on modified momentum theory we call it as the uh, the efficiency mm eh? efficiency zeta mm or modified momentum or simple vortex model svm okay we just use mm in this case is defined as here eh? so we can have uh, modified uh, zeta mm so efficiency of the momentum modified momentum okay equal you have the component of the thrust you can have the component of the velocity okay? come incoming air okay and then divided by the thrust time the uh, flight speed v1 plus the loss of the kinetic energies and then you can uh, replace that into all this right and rearrange it uh, in terms of the uh, component of b eh? the slipstream factor right so rearranging that you can then have equation 4.61 don't 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 be uh, afraid that oh there's too, so many equation to be memorized eh? so normally uh, if being asked, uh, normally this uh, modified momentum uh, efficiency equation normally will be given in the examination.